Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mastering GLSL in Touch Designer. My name is Lake Heckeman, and I'm leading this course. This is lesson nine, uh, Fractional Brownian Motion, FBM Noise, which we'll get into in just a second. First of all, my name is Lake. I'm a new media artist based in Brooklyn, New York, and I explore how human perception and how we connect with each other can be changed by technology, uh, sometimes in ways that we don't really understand. And I do this by creating interactive installations using a lot of cutting edge computer graphics techniques that I'm going through and teaching you here. Um, and it's, it's a very rewarding experience for me. So I'm happy to be able to share some of that uh, knowledge with all of you. Some past work uh, that I will not spend too long on, except to note that, again, this piece here uh, is derived very strongly from some of the techniques that we've been going through in the last two lessons, and we'll be continuing in this lesson as well, namely procedural noise and creating customized uh, noise textures for yourself. Actually, now that I mention it, uh, this work called time lapse is also uh, foundationally based on fractional brownian motion um, which is exactly what this lesson is about so now we can get into things uh, as i've said twice already fractional brownian motion or fbm noise is the topic of this lesson um, it's super exciting i love this this is one of my favorite algorithms topics things to experiment with it's really great. Um, and I think it's also probably something that a lot of you are most excited about picking up and being able to, to deepen your usage of. Um, everybody has used noise in Touch Designer and everybody has also seen other people use noise in Touch Designer. And I would be very willing to bet that everyone has seen some work that someone else has created and you've seen some noise being used in it, and you're like, ha, huh, I see that noise. I know what kind it is. I know what the period of that noise is. Um, I maybe know how he's permuting it even to kind of achieve the look. And personally, I strive very much to make it very difficult for anyone who's looking at my work to be able to tease it apart in that way. And I think one of the best ways to kind of start doing that and also developing your own style is by exploring your own types of noise textures. So that is uh, why I think this is such a great lesson, why I think it's very uh, important and worthwhile to delve into. And with that, well, let's delve in. So what is fractional Brownian motion? Um, I think I've started maybe the last four or five lessons with some sort of, so what is this type question? And I do think it's really important because we have to know what we're talking about and kind of be able to use the same language to be able to build these uh, conceptual techniques, but then also understand how best they can be implemented in code for real. So with all that said, fractional Brownian motion is sometimes known or heard, you might heard it, uh, you might hear it online as fractal Brownian motion. Um, they are both probably fine terms. I think fractional is a slightly more precise term, and it is the one that I prefer to use. Fractional Brownian motion is a method of accumulating noise function functions to create more complex patterns. So if you recall, uh, two lessons ago, when we were looking at basic noise, uh, we looked at how to randomly sample and then interpolate between those random samples uh, to create more interesting patterns, which we use to create like a one-dimensional curve and then kind of scaled up to value noise and then based on our interpolation uh, values and kind of the interpolation grid, let's say, uh, we got to Perlin noise, simplex noise, etc. Now, fractional Brownian motion is just one more complicated method of accumulating and interpolating those values. So it was a rather verbose explanation. I think it'll become a little bit more clear as we get into things. Um, but first, we need to talk about the Brownian motion aspect of this term. 
So what is Brownian motion? Well, Brownian motion is the term that is given to a type of motion when a particle or a point changes its location uh, by random increments each time step. So there are several uh, good examples of this. I think the most colloquial is going to be like your random walk down Wall Street, a random walk of the markets, meaning that each day something random changes and each day starts where the last day ended, but you never really know what's going to happen on any given day of the stock market. Up, down, you know, left, right, sideways. Um, other examples include stochastic modeling, like a Monte Carlo type setup. Um, and uh, movement of particles in fluid or air is a pretty canonical example from uh, physics or chemistry. So this little chart just kind of shows you can think of each step as being one straight segment on this chart, but the direction and the length of each segment is determined randomly at each point. So you always know where you're going to start, which is where you ended the last step, but you don't know which direction you're going to go in or how far you're going to step until you actually uh, you know, perform that simulation step. And so the pseudocode for something like this is the position at time t plus one is going to be equal to the position at time t plus uh, some white noise or random function. And that is Brownian motion. That is most simple. So, now we're back to the fractional aspect. And the fractional aspect of Brownian motion basically means that we're going to accumulate each step uh, successively or incrementally, fractionally, if you will. Um, and by doing so, introduce some memory into the process. So your step will not be entirely random. Uh, it will be pretty random. Uh, but really, it'll be like a random increment that is then weighted against uh, the past random increments. And in this way, we set up some sort of self-similarity in our system, which is where the fractal term uh, generally comes into play. And we can determine or really talk about how much self-similarity there is in our system by how much memory takes place. Uh, or persists rather each time step. Um, if memory is is perfect, then the entire system is self-similar because it doesn't change at all, right? If my motion this step is completely a function of my motion last step, then there's never, um, it is always completely deterministic. And so it's completely self-similar. Uh, if there's zero memory, then we're back to here, which is each time step is completely independent from the last. And so all values in between have some level of self-similarity. I took uh, a little chart that shows some examples here uh, for a couple different values of h, which is known as the fractal exponent. And that is essentially the value that is used, the parameter that determines how much self-similarity there's going to be in a fractional Brownian motion process. Um, so in practice, when we're talking about noise, uh, what we're really saying is each step is going to be a superposition of substeps, and each of those substeps will be weighted. So we'll have the first step will have the highest weight, and then the second substep will have half the weight of that, and so on and so forth until we go through all of our substeps and the accumulation of each of those substeps will be our actual step for that uh, time unit. So our pseudocode is going to be something like set our exponent, initialize our accumulated result, and then for all of our substeps, uh, we'll sample a random value. We will scale that random value by our amplitude. We will accumulate that new noise value. And then we'll scale both our domain and our amplitude before we go to the next uh, iteration of our loop, which means that the amplitude that our random result is scaled by and also the domain that we're using to sample the noise uh, is going to change for every one of those substeps. And so we'll have some different values that all get accumulated. And that's what determines uh, the actual value of the FBM noise for that step.
again, uh, we'll, we'll be implementing all of this in just a second. So, yeah, that was kind of the abstract. And now this is going to be applying this algorithm specifically to noise. And so if we kind of go back here, uh, really this random value is what we need to replace with a actual call to a noise function. So we can just use like a simplex noise, uh, which we have already learned how to call in Touch Designer uh, two lessons ago. And we also already know what a for loop is. So we have a for loop. We're gonna iterate over all of our sub steps. Each of those sub steps is gonna be called an octave. We are going to have a scale for our domain that's gonna be known as a lacunarity. Uh, which is going to be how much we scale our domain each success, successive substep. Uh, and then finally, we'll have a parameter called gain, which is derived from our Hurst exponent. Remember, that's the fractal dimension of self-similarity. Um, and so we use that to back into a parameter called gain, which is basically how much our amplitude is going to be scaled each successive substep as well. So uh, yeah, I just list those parameters over on the side uh, against the example code. So we have our octaves, which is the number of layers or substeps, our gain, which is the amount of influence each successive layer has on the result, and then our lacunarity, which is the amount of scaling uh, of the domain between each layer or substep. So when we implement all of this, we are going to be able to kind of recreate the classic FBM noise, as you can see here furthest to the left. Uh, and then there's a couple of other interesting functions that we're going to talk about today, which we can kind of apply on top of the noise to further extract interesting behavior. One of those is going to be a ridge function, uh, which will accentuate the high points of the field. As you can see, kind of the, the edges um, get accentuated here, and there's some more detail in the darker spots. And then finally, uh, turbulence, which is, I lack of a better term, more bubbly, uh, which we uh, implement by accumulating the absolute values of a noise function instead of uh, possibly positive and negative real numbers. Um, yeah, so those are our two kind of noise refinement functions that are pretty fun to play around with. And we'll see how to implement each of those in a second. And then last, uh, just some inspiration, because this is, I think, one of the deepest algorithms that I've so far come across and explored myself. So here are three examples, very different examples, uh, that are all using functionally this exact algorithm uh, with just a little bit of domain manipulation or a lot maybe of domain manipulation uh, to achieve these patterns and then uh, colored using some color palettes. We have here Darian Brito, who's a phenomenal generative artist, uh, this series Pigments, which uh, heavily inspired me um, several years ago when I first made a foray into procedural noise for myself. This is a snapshot of an original work by myself that is currently a work in progress, uh, but using, yeah, FPM and domain manipulation. And then finally, Palm Drop. Uh, Palm Drop is also a great generative artist who also inspired me a lot when it comes to domain warping. He actually has a really cool web interface that you can go and explore different domain warping uh, parameters, functions, processes. It's, it's really deep. It's a really cool web app. Um, I highly recommend you go check it out and you'll probably find some, some cool ideas there as well. That's called surfaces and you can get there on this link. All right, so that is everything for our slides. So from here, we're jumping into Touch Designer. Again, we'll look at implementing FBM with Perlin noise and simplex noise. And then we'll also look at applying the ridge function and the turbulence function. And then, uh, well, that's that's gonna be the basis. And then we'll go through the exercises. Um, so from here, 
to continue following along and also to gain access to this project file and the exercise solutions, make sure to subscribe on Patreon where you will be able to get access to this entire course plus my uh, whole back catalog of touch designer tutorials. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. So go check that out, uh, subscribe to continue following along to this lesson and subsequent lessons, as well as getting the example files. So 